If you come to the Central Valley of California in December, chances are you'll encounter some thick tule fog. Another thing you'll see is miles and miles of citrus trees. Thinking about these things reminds me of a beer I've been wanting to brew again. So today, I'm brewing a hazy IPA. Hazy IPAs are also known as New England IPAs, NEPAs, or any IPAs. This style of beer is one of the more recent styles to be developed. The original NEPA was developed by the Alchemist Brewery over on the East Coast, hence the New England IPA. It's called Hetty Topper. Although I've never actually had one because it's hard to get over here on the West Coast, I've heard it's an excellent example. Thankfully, nowadays you can go to any brewery or liquor store and see tons of different examples for this style. It can actually be a little confusing to someone who isn't into craft beer as much. These beers are often referred to as juicy, hazy, foggy, Ah, what else am I forgetting? So I have to admit, I was a little skeptical when I first saw these beers. The hazy, cloudy beer was just so foreign to me. Uh, for the most part, I've always preferred my beer to be clear. However, after having a few different NEPAs from local breweries, uh, I've really grown to enjoy the style. One of the things I enjoy about this style is how they are packed with hot flavor and aroma, yet bitterness is low to even really none. At the time of recording this, I have exactly eight days till Christmas. I really want to get a beer done and ready by then. I'll be using a few things to help me get this beer done quickly. The first thing I'm going to do is try a new yeast. I've had this packet of Lollamon's Boss Kvaik uh, just sitting in the fridge waiting for its chance to ferment a beer. One of the things to help make this beer get that juicy flavor I'm looking for is using a yeast at warmer temperatures to produce those fruity esters common to the style. I've never used this yeast before, but according to the packet, the optimal temperature to ferment this is between 95 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. That's also gonna reduce the time it takes to ferment this beer. From what I've read, I should expect this to be done fermenting in between two to four days at that temp. To help me maintain that hot temperature, I actually had to get a space heater that I'm going to place in my chest freezer to help me maintain that 95 degree Fahrenheit. The next thing I'll be doing to get this done, beer done quickly is I'm going to ferment this in my Firmzilla All-Rounder. This is going to give me the ability to pressurize my fermenter to help carbonate the beer as it's fermenting. This will save me some time on the back end because basically my beer should be almost ready to drink once fermentation is done and it's chilled down. I also have the added benefit of being able to serve straight from this fermenter if I need to. Although I'm probably going to put this in a keg as I want my fermenter back so I can make more beer. I got no money, like it or not I'm funny, still in search of my destination. I like to party, living my way is already all I Alright, I got my mash in. Uh, I was shooting for 152, kind of overshot it a little bit. Uh, I've got 154 rolling right now. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. So. Well, I was planning on getting some video footage of brew day, but a couple neighbors stopped by and showed some interest in what I was doing. And we had a couple beers and kind of talked them through my brew day. So I uh, didn't get much footage, uh, but brew day went off without a hitch. Mash went fine. I didn't quite hit my numbers. Uh, I came up a little bit short. Final, uh, the starting gravity was supposed to be a 1061 and I hit 1059. Not too bad. Uh, I did shorten my boil. I only did a 30 minute boil for this one uh, because there were no hop additions for bittering. Uh, all I did was I called them whirlpool additions, but I did add them with about three minutes left and then just kept them in there while I cooled it down. I only cooled it down to 95 degrees because that's what I'm fermenting at. So that only took about 15, 20 minutes. So overall, a pretty short brew day. All I got, all that's left now is to uh, clean up. It is early in the morning. This Kvike stuff is crazy. It had started fermenting like within two hours of yeast pitch. So I had to get up early today because I wanted to dump my dry hops in 
at High Krausen, and I honestly have no idea how long that's gonna last. It's 12 hours later, I figured now's a good time because it looks like it's at High Krausen. So for the dry hop, I'm dumping in my largest dry hop ever, six ounces total, two ounces each of the same hops that I threw in the boil, uh, Azaka, Idaho 7, and Sabro. One of the things I really like about the Firmzilla All-Rounder with the pressure kit is the fact that pulling a sample is just so easy. If I keep this little picnic tap you know, just sanitized and stored in my beer fridge so that whenever I want to take a sample of a beer, I can do that. Uh, and this sample was taken at 36 hours after yeast pitch uh, just to kind of see how it was coming along. And the hydrometer read 1016. Expected final gravity on this one is 1015, so at 36 hours, it was almost done. One of the great things about this Firmzilla All-Rounder is the ability to do a pressure transfer. So I figured I'd walk you through my process here. So I have my uh, sanitized keg. I pushed out the sanitizer with CO2, so it is completely oxygen free. I've got my pressurized Firmzilla ready to go here. And all I need to do is I've got, I set this up so that I have a, uh, an extra, a manifold with an extra long hose here so I can kind of reach this <laughs> to any point. I'm going to go ahead and let me sanitize my gas. I labeled, because they're the same on the Firmzilla, I labeled my gas intake because this one has a little beverage dip tube in there. So I went ahead and labeled that, that way I don't make any mistakes. So I'm gonna hook my gas up, okay? I'm gonna hook my gas up there. And then I have this little jumper cable that I pushed sanitizer through and filled it with CO2. So it'll be ready. So I'm gonna go beverage out here. So this is the one that's attached to the dip tube. Beverage out to the beverage out. So the beverage tube on this one and then I'm gonna get a spunding valve to release the gas from there. Spunding valve on the other side over there, it's about eight PSI. This is pressurized to 10 PSI. So what's gonna happen is when I put my, when I put my transfer tube on there, it's going to automatically start transferring over into the keg, completely free of oxygen. So as soon as I hook this one up here, we should see liquid start to flow. Yeah, there goes some liquid, and then all I need to do is slowly release over here just till I start to hear it hiss. There we go, and it's very hard to see, but it should be flowing through there, and I'll just be able to watch the level go down there. So in about 10 minutes, it should be done. One of the little tricks I've learned, uh, I'm not sure where I saw it on another YouTube channel. I can't take credit for it, but I've got my Firmzilla right here. And what, what's going to happen is it's just going to keep going down, right? My dip tube, you can see the little ball is floating right behind my thermometer there. So as it goes down, you just kind of tip your Firmzilla on the side. And what it'll do is it'll move that tube line up here and your dip tube will be able to go down and get like every last little bit of beer out of this so you actually can transfer over a little bit more it works really good here we are for the tasting i am super excited about this one my goal was to get this beer done before christmas uh, and i had a total of eight days uh, we are now at the time of filming this after Christmas, but I am happy to report that it was actually done and drinkable uh, on Christmas Eve. Overall, it was done in six days. So, success! I actually could have probably pushed this out in three or four days if I had really wanted to rush it. I was hoping to film the tasting sooner, but with the holidays and everything, I just kind of ran short on time. So, how'd it turn out? 
Uh, overall, it did end up finishing at 1015, which gave this one a 5.8% ABV. Uh, we're going to start with appearance. For me, originally appearance was one of the things that actually turned me off to this style uh, because as you can see, or can't see, through that beer, <laughs> it is cloudy. And I always thought, well, clear beer just tasted better. However, certain styles like Heavy Wiesen and New England IPA, having a hazy beer is completely appropriate. Uh, the first Nipa I ever brewed was almost like a grapefruit juice color, so I was shooting more for an orange juice color on this one, and I got really close. I actually had a glass of orange juice the other day, uh, and I kind of compared it to this, and it, it looked real similar. Uh, so my solution for this one, as you'll see in the recipe, which I will uh, put in the description below, is I used Victory Malt to kind of get that orangey glow. I think I'm close. I think I'm close. Let's get to the tasting. Let's go in for aroma. I get pineapple and orange. Maybe like a little bit of guava. It's exactly what I was going for. Uh, I get a lot of orange. I'm not sure if that's the hops that I used or the Kvike yeast, but I do get that orange pineapple. The other thing that we look for in these Nipas or that most people is a mouthfeel, so like a full body. So let's go in for mouthfeel. Maybe a little thin, maybe maybe a little bit more oats or flaked wheat for mouthfeel. Not bad though. Not bad. Hard to ignore taste on that. <laughs> Uh, so, taste on this. Juicy. Get the orange. I get the little bit of pineapple, some grapefruit still. Uh, not a lot of bitterness, which is what I was hoping for. I did not add any hop additions for bittering, so... Yeah, orange, pineapple, grapefruit. Good mix, low bitterness, super juicy. Uh, at 5.8%, I don't get a lot of alcohol. Maybe a little bit of hot burn still. Yeah, overall impression, I definitely like this one uh, much more than the first one I did. The first one I did, I actually ended up throwing some of it out. I think it got oxidized. It was just not tasting very good. Overall, very pleased with this one. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this one. It's going to go quick. So, anyway, hopefully, if you guys like, uh, if you guys like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, consider giving me a subscribe as well too if you want more videos. I try, I'm trying to put these videos out every week, once a week or so, uh, with beer recipes, tips, trip tricks, reviews, uh, anything homebrew related. So. Anyway, till the next video, cheers.